Welcome to New Zealand. Thanks for joining me. Paul Smith, YouTuber, photographer, extraordinaire. <laughs> Just pulling your leg, not really. Hey, welcome to the channel. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I'd appreciate it. Today, I'm going to be talking about seeing, developing your photographic eye, and 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 how you can how you can develop that uh, the ability to see pictures, the ability the ability to to, to, to be able to recognize a picture when when it, when it when it when it comes to you or when it's sitting there the ability to recognize a picture and how you do that uh, the other reason um, for the vlog today is uh, I've just literally about an hour ago received um, a couple of new cameras and one of them is this camera here which is uh, an Olympus OM1N <laughs> which is just gorgeous um, if I ever needed a reason to remind me of why I love Olympus cameras, um, this surely is it. I also have a roll of Color Plus 200. I haven't shot this film before, so looking forward to seeing how that performs. Uh, I'm on the farm here, uh, my backyard at the moment. Uh, I'm not too sure what I'm going to shoot. There's a couple of horses here. I think I might take some pictures of some horses and uh, see how this camera works. I've got a, uh, a 35 to 70 on there. I've also got a 75 to 150 in my bag zoom lens i don't shoot zoom lenses hardly ever um, I, I just usually shoot primes um, so today's a bit of a new experience for me playing around with these lenses to see how good they are it's going to take some pictures uh, not a great day for photography the light is pretty harsh today come and join me let's uh, get into some photography and we'll talk a, a little bit later about this whole idea of seeing and how you develop your eye for photography and that whole vision thing let's get into it Time to talk about the main, the main topic of today's 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 video, which was that whole thing about seeing and developing y your eye. Um, to me, it's the most important thing. As much as 80% of it, I think, is about seeing, being able to visualize, being able to to recognize a good photograph when you see it. Photography is very individual, and I think an important part about developing your style is to find out what sparks your emotion. What are the feelings that you get when you look at something or you see something? That's always an indicator. If you're looking at something and you see something and you feel something, it's an indicator that there's a picture there. For me, I, whenever I see something and I have an interest in it and I um, have a curiosity in taking a picture of it, I always follow that curiosity. For me personally, I think an important part of my childhood was spent looking at, looking at pictures. You know, slide nights, wedding albums. I've always been fascinated with you know, like things like Time magazine. 
I've always been interested with the way that photos and pictures make me feel. And I've always had a curiosity for photography. And I just love looking at pictures more so than reading. I, I, I'm not a reader. The feelings that I get when I look at photography is, 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 is very special to me. I think it's very important to look at as much photography as you possibly can. Try to identify what it is in that photography that you like. And then, you know, just, just look. Just look and store it in your mind. Uh, I'll, give you a, I'll tell you a good story. I'm a real big fan of Ralph Gibson. Uh, I've talked a little bit about him on this channel. A few years back now, I was, I was just doing some street photography, I guess, uh, down at the Auckland waterfront, and I saw a cyclist coming towards me, immediately recognised that there was a picture to be taken here. So um, I didn't have long to do it. I was, you know, we're talking about, you know, a cyclist coming to me from about 100 metres away. So I've got seconds to get the camera ready, try and work out a, an aperture and a, you know, um, a shutter speed. Um, so by the time I've done that, basically the cyclist is pretty much there on, on top of me. So I quickly put the camera to my eye, I took the photograph, got my negatives back a week or two later, and immediately identified a really nice picture, which was the photograph of the cyclist, the shadow falling, and uh, the, the pavement markings. One of the better pictures I've taken, actually. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, um, anyway, I was looking at some Ralph Gibson stuff and came across this picture here. And as you can see, very similar to my picture. And it, it, it dawned on me this whole thing about, well, I, I've obviously seen this picture before and it obviously had made a mark on me. And I think it proves a very good point. I think, you know, by looking at Im images, by looking at photographs, we start to make a, a, a database in our memory as, as a recall, as, as, as a way of recalling for later on when, we, when we're out looking for things. And I think these little things spark in our memory. Now, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, these things are here. And I think we, we often recall on them uh, when we're making pictures for ourselves. Hey, Banjo, do you want to come and get a drink? we got Banjo coming for a drink now. Come on, mate, I'm not going to hurt you. Can I get a drink? Um, what we might do, we might just move out the way and, and because I think this horse wants a drink. So I'm going to move out the way and carry on this conversation um, so this, this guy can have a drink because I think he's thirsty. You thirsty, mate? Um, I'll be back in a second. You know, so with my Ralph, my Ralph Gibson experience, is it copying? And I, I, I don't really know. And I, I guess, I guess you could say it's copying in a way. I think it's more a case of you know gathering little pieces of information from other people, uh, recognizing what it is you like about their photography, uh, and then using that as an influence to um, to create your own stuff. And I think that the, the broader your photography knowledge is, and the, and the broader that database becomes I was talking about before uh, the broader it gets uh, the more you use it to I guess kind of just season it's a good word season your own your own photography so you're just using little little influences to 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 create your own style I guess this whole thing this artistic eye the um, artistic side of photography can it be taught can you teach yourself um, I'd be very interested in your comments. Leave a comment below and uh, we can discuss it. Uh, be interesting. Um, I have about, I think, 12 frames left on my roll of film, which I'm going to carry on shooting now. Uh, don't know what I'm going to take pictures of. Uh, nothing's really sparking me, but uh, I am enjoying using this camera. It's uh, quite a delight to use. Um, um, let's carry on. Let's carry on with this roll of film and uh, finish off and uh, wrap up.
that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Uh, like I said, interested to see what your thoughts are on that today. Uh, hope you enjoyed the results from my roll of film. Uh, not a great deal of things to photograph today, but again, that wasn't the the exercise. It was just really to test that roll and uh, to test this camera. Uh, Got to say, I really enjoyed using the the OM1 or OM1N. It actually is a beautiful camera, beautiful beautiful system. Those cameras are just lovely to use, and I really rate them. Um, really, really rate the lens system on those. Those Zuiko lenses are just beautiful. Uh, enjoyed using them today. A little bit different from a rangefinder. Uh, had to adapt myself a little bit, but uh, just love using that camera. Just a beautiful camera. And uh, it's going to get a lot of use, I think, in the coming weeks and months, uh, especially on my Looking for New Zealand project. I think I'll be picking that up and using it a bit on that. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, I've got to go now, but if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by buying my book, Scenes from the Black Sand, which is available from my uh, website. I'll put a link up here and I'll also put links below for that. So a link up here and below for that. Scenes from the Black Sand is a book about my photography and my time spent uh, in and around the Black Sand beaches of the Auckland West Coast. Kariatahi, Port Waikato, there's a bit of raglan in there as well and uh, you know very unique area of New Zealand and played a, played a big part of my photography and my photography development. Scenes from the Black Sand is available for 30 New Zealand dollars and that includes free shipping. 30 bucks New Zealand, 30 dollars New Zealand equates to roughly about half that in pounds sterling. 15 pound, 14, 15 pound I think it is and about 16 US dollars so it's about half. That's Scenes from the Black Sand. If you've been inspired through my videos and my vlogs and my photography um, the best way that you can support me uh, and help me to keep on creating this content is to go and buy that book. So that's Scene from the Black Sand. Like I said, a link up here for that and a link below. i got to go now. Um, you take care. Please stay safe. Um, come back again and see me again soon. Uh, I'd appreciate that. I have to go. Hi there from New Zealand. Goodbye. Thank you. I was flicking through some Ralph Gibson stuff and came across a Ralph Gibson picture and thought to myself, oh, you want some water? We've got a horse here, come for drink for some water. Hey, you're thirsty. You're a beautiful boy, aren't you? I love the feeling of horses. The horse, horses are a majestic animal. And until I've lived here, I was actually quite in fear of horses and, and um, and uh, a little bit untrusting of them. I've got two on my doorstep right now. But they're just a beautiful animal, aren't you? You're a beautiful animal. And uh, that's Lyndon, who's one of the horses here on the property.